Um, it's something we've seen, though, as you said yesterday. So I, we'll see how the rest of the series goes because we're at a point now where we're seeing Avatar on Sky Temple, and you kind of have to think that's a bigger sign of the meta moving towards that Illidan, the Grey Mane, the Avatar Zeratul you've seen already. Avatar is becoming so popular right now that, you know, on and in the past you'd be like, okay, Cursed Hollow maybe, Battle for the Eternal we saw a lot in the past. Then you're looking at Sky Temple back in the day, you would think, oh, well, never Abathur there. But even now we're seeing Abathur dominate here, so it's very much something to consider that the Illidan ban might start to take over the Genji ban as we move forward because it's just a pick that we're seeing more and more of right now. Yeah, oftentimes when there were clones on the other side, lots of some Korean teams actually backed off, not even tried to fight because just buying the time of clone when that when the clone is clone is expired and then they would go in for the team fight but it was very hard because they had Lucio the speed boost made that impossible of course they had a lot of die with the extra speed boost they could not really get away from any team fight so I think I think L5 had a very strong draft but with the second second battleground now we're going into Towers of Doom okay Blossom they have a lot of potential with the global the macro fight of course goes for the L5 with the more experience but I think this map, they have a good chance of coming back. So, I I actually don't know if I like this map pick by L5. I remember what we saw already from Blossom on this map. This is a map where you see innovation. The Samuro pick was really <laughs> Samuro, solid. I want to see him again. I want to see it again. Because I want to see if L5 can deal with it. Because it was so powerful. And remember, that's with Mora accidentally picking Bladestorm mistakenly misclicking clicking Bladestorm would have been even harder to deal with the split pushing with the uh, uh, extra escape there instead of the Bladestorm. Yeah, also the another problem now is L5 can still use Illidan once more so from the very beginning they ban Avatar and L5 are they gonna ban Genji? They leave it open ban Ariel instead. So Ariel removed now and we will see Genji the first pick by Blossom. So makes the Samuro pick less likely, sadly. <laughs> Riven, <laughs> there's Uther with the Stitches. Of course, Ariel already banned, but Stitches has been the big, big favorite with the stronger teams from Korea. Right now with those hooks over the walls, especially when, it's, and also if you have Tastar, so follow-up CCs, that's also a reason why we've been seeing lots of Kel'Thuz coming back with the CC chain. Well, 17 and 8 is Genji in this tournament. It is pretty solid. That's over 67% to do my... It was 67 yesterday, yeah. but with that win at the end, that's... That's a sign! Yeah, it's like 67.8% now. <laughs> sign that the hero is pretty strong right now in this matter. There was a slight, small nerf onto his talent, uh, onto his quest, I mean, at four. I know everyone always freaks out about the stitches, by the way. Uh, I meant to mention this today because um, I, I get a lot of tweets about it. The stitches in Korea has got his belly fixed. He's fine. Everything is all right. It's PG-12 uh, here, so. He's okay, guys. He's all right. He's all right. I know it might look strange to you, but he's pretty happy he got his belly fixed. But he's okay. He's okay. He, he just wants to patch, play, man. you know. Yeah. He still eats a lot of heroes because he wants to play. But they're leaving pick with the Tyrael to take away from Hooligan. And that two hero play from Hooligan in game one was sick. He knew the exact timing of the shield coming back. That was insane. So... Ban Samuro? Nah. <laughs> Not even close. Um, Mouth Ale could be an option. They can still go for the support choke. To Guther, Ariel Ban. Arthas. Is this a sign that Illidan is going to come out? I, Looks I like think it. Blossom should read where this draft is going. I think that's an easy ban, as they still do not have any global. Okay. They're highlighting it at least. Based on our draft of Blossom throughout Phase 2, never necessarily know that when they highlight, they're going to ban it. It's an easy ban, but you always think, is this the right ban? Because it seems too obvious. Well, it's going to be Tastar instead, Just which limits limits Illidan's yeah. strength. Remo removing lots of protection onto multiple heroes. 
not just Illidan, they can also go for Vala, so I think that they went around and disband Tastar instead. It can also be very st strong solo lane with the wave clear too. So I think that uh, Greymane is going to be the way to go now for DPS. Protect him with the Uther. Tyrael's already taken away though. Looks like Blossom is really concerned about the Illidan pick. And now maybe also considering the uh, the Tastar ban because of the potential for Vala to be done with the double support. SC, this is going to be about his hero right now in this draft. That's why he's shown on camera. See who he's bringing to the table now. Will it be that Vala he's so famous for with only the solo Uther support? More Time likely, to find out. More likely we'll see... The Grey Man, yep. But Nazebo joining in. Before, they would bring in False Step because they had Nitrogen. But without Nitrogen, they have not played a single game of False Step from what I see on the sheet. Sheets don't lie, man. Yeah, sheets. The data does not lie. I don't think they have a super player with the False Step yet on L5. So I think they went around. And maybe they're not even considering going global at all. The Haka is still open. The Blossom may just end up taking it because the Haka is a soft counter to Genji also with the drag will just with a soft squishy squishy body when you're CC'd you can get blown up instantly well waiting for that support pick you'd have to assume it'll be the Rhaegar given the map solo laner is the big question mark Tyrael can be a solo laner we've seen that a lot will we see something else will we see a melee come down with the Tyrael maybe we can see Thrall so the big questions here for Blossom. They don't have the, the answer. It's gonna show us now as the time runs out. It'll be Brightwing for that solo top and Leoric will come in here as an odd pick from Blossom, but Blossom loves to just throw wrenches into the gears of the meta, especially on this map. So not really dealing with some heavy tank busting with the Leoric, but you can grab Nazebo with the Entomb doesn't have an escape. That's one way to eliminate him from the fight early on. And Leoric, of course. Very good solo lane with a decent wave clear and bright wing with the global. You can also protect Genzi later on with lots of AoE healing. But that will give not much of a sustain, actually. Genzi would oftentimes dive in or onto the side. And if you're away from bright wing, of course, you cannot get healed. So Genzi would have to be careful on that. Maybe we'll see Emerald Wind coming out. It's not much of a dive con for L5 yet. Let's see how they actually finish this draft. I think Dehaka is still a very good Marthil. So the strong solo laner. That's what they were looking for is a solo laner. It's going to be Mouth up in the top lane. They have two tanks. So he's going to get a lot of value in terms of DPS. And when he pops his Tormented Souls, it's going to be really powerful in these team fights with realistically uh, only the Brightwing healing. It's going to be very difficult to actually outheal that DPS when Azebo is dropping down the DPS. Malthale, it's going to be a lot of burn damage on the side of L5. As we go into game number two here, this is the map Towers of Doom. Let's jump into it. In blue, Wiz on Brightwing, Gondar on Tyrael, Mora on the Orc, Dudu on Genji, and No Chat on the Ming. And in red, L5, Hooligan on Stitches, SCSC on Azebo, Jungha on Martel, SDE on Greymane, and Swoy on Uther. So. The battle has begun. Ooh, actually, Nazebo going top. For now, we'll see if that ends up being okay. a, a real thing. I don't think it will be. It seems like they are already on to the push of the bot lane. A little bit with Malthero and Grammy with the burst damage. Remember, SC has the highest Nazebo win rate in Korea. So <laughs> this is a hero that he played throughout all of phase one as soon as it became meta around the second part of the first phase. 
Ooh, they want to punish them for going over. That poly. There's the poly. So you cannot escape. There's a first kill onto Greyman. Good focusing, good shot calling, coming down at the perfect timing. Of course, without Lucio now, they do not have so much speed. Interesting that Hooligan would want to shove this wave so far forward. Maybe this is a bait attempt by him. Gets the hook, but there's no follow-up, and it's on a Genji who has deflect available, so... Doesn't end up really mattering all too much there, and it will be the solo Nazebo for now. Malthale is actually pushing the bot lane with Uther. So we saw the kind of swaps for having the Malthale with the support to really shove a lane, but it is countered already by the Brightwing teleport. The entire draft of Blossom, they... A lot of them actually has an escape, even... Brightwing with the blink heal later on will have an escape. The only one without the escape is Leoric. He also has a walk, so he does have an escape. So hooks, I think, will be less effective against this comp somewhat. Now, also, there is not much of a follow-up, but with some follow-up with a zombie wall burst damage, they can still get a pick, but less likely with this comp coming out from Blossom. Yeah, definitely. Hooligan just trying to block here, does avoid those magic missiles. He took Damp and Magic, so they're not as painful, but still doesn't want to eat the damage regardless. Wiz will get caught here. There's the follow-up stun with Uther, not much else. You see the E is dropped down here from Malathail, but just not enough DPS to grab a pick here on this fight. Not yet. So, it's interesting that Brightwing's actually already with the team, not actually getting any soak. So, no, neither team can have an advantage in terms of globals in this 4v4. Another pick on the Wiz. Hooligan is on fire tonight. Is still taking a lot of damage. There's Polly already used, but this D dives in for the last bit of burst damage. Oh, that stun! And seems like we'll see another kill with the cocktail. Cocktail at the very on end. the wall kill there, using the wall to get the splash. But that stun by Swoy was sick. That was okay. I knew exactly where he's gonna be. It was like he clicked the stun before Genji even jumped. <laughs> All right. That was good. It was good. It's target and it's easy, but the timing and the positioning has to be perfect, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, he just knew exactly what was going to happen before it happened. You got to give respect to moments like that. And Brightwing actually going for a poly build. Very interesting. And of course, before the blink kill comes along, if you get those kind of hooks several times in a row, you get kills with a CC. And Brightwing, because Brightwing was also forced to go back, could not really heal the entire teammates. That worked out perfectly for L5. That's the power of stitches that we've been seeing so far, so much in Korea. Hooligan is just hitting the hooks onto Wiz specifically. Once he has blink heal, it's not gonna work as well, but for the early game, it's so, so good. Okay, Hooligan's barely gonna get out of this one. And the cannon tower out of ammo, so not really getting anything. Looks for the hook against uh, the Genji here. Actually looks like it might be a kill anyways. A teleport for the Sehi. Barely gets that shield off. I thought, I thought he almost got stunned right before the swift, and he could have he could have been dead, but it was right after. But he does save at the moment, but he has he had to go hearth back home, so that's costing a lot of rotational work for Blossom. These kind of small things, it's all working for all five, of course, because they're putting out so much damage, making the enemy go hearth back home. They can use that much more time to actually go. Exactly like this, go for the Sapper camp before the next auto phase. Yep. And just looking at these talents, the spider build is real for Nazebo. Nothing really out of the ordinary for any of these players. He will get killed specifically in Nazebo, as I say that though, by the dive from Dudu over the wall. And Genji is taken out, so it's a one for one here. Will they be able to get more? SDE is very low, but he's in very safe positioning. There's the kill onto Wiz again. They shift for some extra shield onto his teammate, but that was a good sacrifice, Wiz. Well done. Gondar but is going to go down. Will he be able to get the kill afterwards? That's Ooh, the question. Nice spot by jong -ha was coming out from the side. Well, this will be another kill, though. That's the kill there onto Leoric, not onto... And maybe Mateo will get another kill. Seems like he did at the very end, catching with the strike. Oh my god. This is starting to get out of control for L5. Look at this, another almost hit hook here. The prediction was real. This is pretty gnarly, the lead we're watching. We knew this was uh, potentially going to be a 3-0 series, but this game is off the rails <laughs> right now. Both caps taken now for L5. They're going to have 10 first, and they're looking to pressure this bell tower. Ooh, I don't know how this happened. Another kill from Jung Ha. Wow. 
He must have just missed his last W there. They're going to look for the escort here. Two pumpkin men in that lane. Seems like the slow is helping, and seems like they may get a kill, may not. I mean, he almost got the. Oh, will he get it? He gets it. What? That's Sick, worth it. Now that's. They don't say Tyrrell has bad wave clear. Who says that? <laughs> that's worth I I'd say getting two kills on top. Well, that just should have happened. That just should not have happened. How did that happen? Why did they allow that to happen? I think uh, mentality a problem now for Blossom is they're just uh, making some mechanical mistakes even in lane. Percent damage for four seconds. Martheo is so powerful right now. Even Genji, even looks, even Genji looks weak in front of Mar Martheo right now, which has the highest win rate of all heroes right now in this patch. And the real macro stores starts here. L5 already with the extra bell tower onto their side. The Uruk has been pushing top, but it's still onto the very first wall, as we just saw with the 2v1 kill. Well, Hooligan's looking for the money hook, waiting for the angle on Wiz. Doesn't have it, doesn't even try for it. Only gonna get the hook when he has the perfect one. He could pull him into the fort slow here, the bell tower stolen. Oh, that could have been an opportunity. Doesn't go for it, though. Just wants to have the best opportunity. That was not it, <laughs> but he went for it onto Wiz. Okay, this is just going to be them protecting this bell tower. SC's getting free soak top, by the way. This is a five-man rotation for Blossom. Where's the value from the Bright Wing? Where's the split soak? Where's the EXP? Nothing is happening. They're trying to take this bell tower back and failing while SC is just getting more stacks uh, for later on. If we go late game, which looks very unlikely at this point, he's getting more stacks. He's getting more tanky. And what are you what are you gonna do? I mean, if you don't have anybody up there, he's just gonna get that that extra stacks pushing towards 13. They don't get the bell tower anyways. There's, there's the forge. Also, Tyrio Gondar will not escape actually with the hammer coming down with the stun. And John is onto the other side, solo sustaining himself with the soul rib. He seems like he will actually go down. There's the divine shield to actually save him before going down. The entomb trying to. Uh, it stopped the rest of the team Ooh, from chasing. That hook was almost too close on Nocha. He almost dodged that too. Goes down. That's going to be ten shots into the core. Double Templar, sorry, double altars taken. The bot bell tower remains controlled by L5, doubling the health now on the core. The only bell tower that Blossom was able to get was the first three man, or sorry, the first three spawn, and that is it. It's not 0-40, come on. They still have a chance. This is Towers of Doom. Anything can happen here. Seems unlikely, but Blossom can make a difference as they have the global. I think if they go for lots of pokes to get them the Bell Towers, catch up with the macro, if Bright Wing soaks free on the other side, just not getting caught on those hooks, I think they still have a chance, but it'll take a while for sure. Yeah. You're more optimistic than I am about this, but we'll see. I'm Anything an can happen. Person too. <laughs> Anything can happen. Ooh, can Genji can get killed by Pumpkin Man. That could happen. <laughs> that almost did on TV. Whoa, close call. So, <laughs> uh, I think Blossom in this game just needs to focus on not getting hooked, not getting picked, and try to look for the longer team fight. Sanctification wasn't even used in that last fight because the Gorge came in. Got the Gorge, then the follow up stun. And the fights, they barely used any heroics last time, you know? Like, they need to be focusing on the longer fights. You're using the sanctification. Here it is right now, already. Right wing nearly dead. John is going to dive uh. over, get the kill. Without using Tormented Souls, mind you. Still on cool or off cooldown. Right wing was a little bit away from sanctification. Got so much damage. Got barely in with the blink kill. But after that, it was dead right wing right after. This spell tower will be yep. taken again from L5. And meanwhile, the heroic dies also. And he's looking for some deflect damage, but he's taking a lot of damage. I don't think he has Swift available. Nope. Oh my. So he does survive there at the end of the day. Bell Tower taken. Double altars very close together this time. Braving not getting any value as a global hero this entire game is a bit concerning. Mora. <laughs> what? Why was he even there? Why did he even do that? For just as a human word, he was being a human word. Come on. Oh, Mara. An interesting. Maybe we'll see new memes coming out for modern life. But SC gets Polly, does get Divine Shield at, at the perfect timing. Swoy the God. 
there's the tormented soul. Look at that damage! AoE Jonga is on fire with 4v1ing on the left side alone! Hello! It's like, uh, you guys saw it was nerfed? No, it's fine. <laughs> I didn't get nerfed. I'm still good. My positioning is good. I got on top of all of you. Mora looking to put get more uh, deaths in this game. It looks like does it escape this time, but was very aggressively positioned. Eight shots left. They still couldn't retake the bot. Bell Tower, the boss is going to be taken. That's going to put them on boss lethal. Even if the Bell Tower is retaken, one more channel will win the game for L5. We're only 11 minutes in. This is one of the most one-sided games I have seen of Towers of Doom. And even though it's theoretically possible, and as you said, anything can happen on this map because the, the objective doesn't necessarily snowball, really. It just gives you shots on the court. It's 16 to 14. It's not the biggest level lead we've ever seen. It just feels like if Blossom continues to play like this, I can't imagine a world where they come back here. But they only have four health. That's the thing. I, I think they need a lot more time, <laughs> a lot more HP on their core to actually come back. And keep on losing their belt. Jonga coming in along does not have his Tormented Soul. I think this could be a very good pick if they get it. I thought he could 4v1 again, but... Or sorry, 1v4. He thought he could 1v4 again. Not this time. Not, yet. Not without Tormented Souls. He but could look have at this. before the patch. There is a nerf, 20 seconds. Well, that is one health left on the core. While they were getting that kill on the Jung'a, which happened a lot yesterday too. He was distracting them. And now they're just one shot away of anything will end the game. Any objective, any escort. They're going to try to grab this one. It looks like, here we go, Dragon Blade is used. And there's the Gorge. And the Holy Ground is actually giving them away for now. But all, he also wants the it. Sanctification. <laughs> they're putting everything in right now. Divine Shield has the perfect who on to Uther himself. But they will actually take the Sappers away from Blossom. And one shot will be enough. Yep, one shot will be enough, but it's not going to happen with this cap because of the altar, sorry, the bell tower is still oh, okay. available. But still, the triple spawn here, the last triple spawn of the game, is unfortunately going to be impossible for Blossom to deny all three. Let's see how they want to approach this. They've got one shot. Any mistakes, any channel completion will be game over. This is almost game over. It's three altars. It is, will be impossible. It will be a crazy miracle for Blossom to actually stop all this from happening. L5, they just have to take one. Okay, SC is looking for the bottom channel. Tyrael is denying him a little bit down there, as you can see. Ice block used here for Wiz. Does get the blink heal away. There's a poly onto Marthio, but no follow-up damage. Gets the kill onto Nazebo. They can actually... Have the channel is going on. The channel. Hooligan is channeling. Dude, he needs to stop him. He misses That's the shuriken, and they get it. That's going to be the end of the game. The last four shots. Five shots actually going for that one last HP. And the game goes again to L5, making the series 2-0. And almost nearing to the end of the series now before the break. Those macros. And Blossom had a tough time, of course. Even with the Brightwing, they were really not using Brightwing as the global. They were more using they were more using global Brightwing as their healer. And if they were not using the global at all, maybe using Kerosene, maybe using some other support could have been better. I feel like. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of things that went wrong with that game, like Mora dying for no reason twice. That uh, one, I don't know what happened there. You know, the shurikens they were blocked there. They couldn't get the kill onto the um, onto or sorry, get the delay onto the altar. But that was a really like the last fight of the game was their best one, and I'm they had the two v one against yeah. They got the two v one against the Zebo. So uh, Li Ming and Tyrael got that one. They collapsed up there to try to get the kills. They're winning the fight in the top lane or sorry, not in the top lane, in the top right altar. But they still just couldn't stop Hooligan with the channel. The shurikens were blocked and. Too many resources committed to try to get the kill in the bot, so couldn't actually get that blocked as quickly as they wanted to there for the Alter Channel. But that is going to be it for our first two games. We have a short commercial break before we come back and see if Blossom can turn this series around. So we'll see you then after the break.